What's going on guys? Welcome back to Life by the Bow. This morning things are a little different. Mm -hmm. Reason why is just because us and the southwestern part of Florida just went through a very catastrophic hurricane. If you guys are new to the channel, my name's Clay. This is my wife, Stephanie, and we live down here in the Florida Keys. But for all of our viewers that watch us consistently, we just want to let you guys know that we're okay. Um, yeah, we're fine. Just a little yard work, nothing too... Uh, nothing too crazy. Nothing too crazy, nothing to worry about. Mm -hmm. Lower Keys and Key West specifically got a lot of storm surge, but the West Coast was completely devastated. So what we're gonna do for this week's videos, we'd like to add some relief funds in the description below. So that way we can contribute back. We just don't feel like- Sticking a bunch of cameras in people's yeah. faces and, you know, adding to the hardships that they're going yeah. through. You know, we film a lot. Yeah. And we see the way that people act with cameras and it's just not a comfortable situation, but what we want to do on our side yeah. is we want to do everything that we can possibly do mm -hmm. and we want to use our platform to our advantage in order to help these people and pretty much the reason why we went with relief funds is because there's a lot of damage that mm -hmm. they're going to need help with and after losing everything you know you start from scratch some of them don't even have clothes to wear but it's like what happens once everyone's gone we want to help them you know with some monetary value so they can purchase some of these things and get back on their feet and that's why we chose those specific yeah, re uh, relief, relief funds. funds so like stephanie said do what you can um these people really need it there's a couple relief funds down in the video description below and we're gonna do whatever we can but the same exact time you know we're gonna go out there do some fishing mm -hmm. and kind of the theme of today's video is how good or you know does the fishing get better after a hurricane yeah. because we definitely did have some pretty heavy winds down here in the florida keys yeah. so we're gonna hop on the boat get some weekly groceries but ultimately don't forget about everybody throughout this storm mm -hmm. and um let's just try to be positive let's go out there have a good day Not even five minutes after pulling out of the house and we already see mullet running. Mm-hmm. They're which all is crashing and probably getting chased around by some fish. I think that's another reason why fishing gets so good in the fall down mm -hmm. here in the Florida Keys is because we get this big push of bait. Not only pilchards, but the mullet too. Oh, I got so many of them. Good. <laughs> Nice. What's <laughs> awesome about mullet too is they're a lot hardier than say a pilchard. So these baits should not have a problem lasting all day long. Yeah, buddy. There's some big mullet. Yep. To be honest, I'm more so interested just in the smaller ones. I don't really want the big ones. Looks like you got a Ooh. variation of size. That's another thing. As soon as you Ooh. open the live ball, they will no... jump out. Yeah. <laughs> Look how funny that. prediction for today and that prediction is that the fishing is going to be really good reason why is because in the past when we've had big storms down here in the keys fishing turns on but every day is a new day so you never really know but personally what i've kind of put together in my head is i think to myself whenever these storms come through these fish undergo stress you know they're not eating and functioning and living the same way that they typically do on a day-to-day -day basis so I kind of think that they stop feeding when these storms come through. And then once the storm is gone, what ends up happening is all the shrimp, the crabs, the bait fish, they all get stirred up from the bottom and thrown around. Personally, I think it creates a feeding frenzy. 
I don't really know, but we're just gonna go and test out whatever I have going on up here. And we're gonna see if we can turn it into a successful day. So we're pulling up on some numbers that we fished here in the past. Um, we just decided we'd just give it a little shot here, see what we can do. Basically, we're gonna drop the trolling motor. We're gonna use what's called spot lock. The trolling motor has a GPS built into it. So basically, it'll hold this in place just like an anchor, which is awesome. And then we're gonna put some chum off the back, maybe get some yellow tails off the back, put a couple rods down on the bottom, maybe a mud snapper. Line. Yeah, do a flat line too. Yeah, do a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. Best part about bottom fishing is you literally park your bottom on a chair. That's Stephanie's definition of bottom fishing. And you park your bottom. I just felt a big thump. The only thing that's probably gonna be biting today is me and that sandwich. I don't know, I'm getting a bite right now. I'm All just right. gonna wait. I'm getting little nibbles on it. What I'm thinking to myself is, is that could be like little grunts or little snappers just chewing on it but I don't want to reel up on that. The reason why is I'm waiting for that big old dig. Action brings action. So as those little picker fish are picking at the bait, there could be a big mutton snapper or grouper lurking around waiting to come in. He's not sure though, but the more he sits there and looks at all those other little fish picking at it, the more enticing it seems. See? Oh, Rod look at that. digging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if that stops, that means that they completely chewed away the bait. So you can reel up, put on a new bait after that. I'm gonna be patient on this right here. I'm on! And it feels like a good fish, actually. Okay, all right. It's actually feeling like it could be a mackerel, just the way that it's swimming. It literally went down, look at that. I'm not really sure what it is, actually. I'll tell you what, it's fighting. Clay's not here to help me, but you know what? I'm an independent woman, so I'm gonna do it myself real quick. Hopefully don't lose this fish. I'll tell you what, having long nails is not easy. What is it? What is it? Is it, is it the fish? Woo it's a mutton! I was saying I really wanted a mutton, but you know what stinks? I don't think he's big enough. Oh look, he has a crab in his mouth that just came out. Look at that. You think he's legal? He's short. Dang it. This is a descending device that we bought off Amazon and it's actually illegal to bottom fish without one of these on your boat. There we go. Got one on here. I'm gonna say we probably have a little yellow tail. Think so? Yep what I want to say. Well, I'm listen. seeing yellow. Yup. <gasps> Look at that. That's what we got. You think he's legal? Yeah, for sure. So that. he just threw up a bunch of chum. So what that leads me to believe is there's a lot more down there. And what we got them on, just a little tiny bonita chunk. But yeah, we'll, we'll probably switch gears, start doing a little more yellow tailing and just put out the bottom rods as a secondary. Hopefully we'll get bit on the bottom, but nice. So we're gonna show you guys our bottom rig here real quick, how this works. Basically 5,500 pen slammer, 30 pound suffix 832 Key Largo custom rod. And on the 30 pound suffix 832, we're gonna do what's called a bimini twist, right? And what that's doing is it's creating a double line. It's gonna create a stronger connection from our line to leader, which is going to be 30 pound fluorocarbon. And the second reason why we want that double line is this loop is actually going to be where we clip on our weight, which is gonna be the tag end of our line to leader connection. So now we're gonna do the double uni knot and I'm not gonna show you guys how to tie the knots but I'm gonna give you the gist of what I'm doing. Double uni knot is probably one of the more preferred knots when it comes to doing a line to leader connection. And basically what it is, it's a knot on one side and a knot on the other side. And those two knots come together to prevent the lines from slipping away from each other. And then this 
is our 30 pound suffix 832, right? And that was where we created our Bimini twist, but now it's a loop on our tag end. That is also where we are going to clip on our weight. See a lot of guys, they like to use swivels and they like to hand line the fish. The luxury of this is if you get a really big fish, you can just take off the weight and then we can just reel this entire line to leader connection into the rod. Great thing is too, is once you're done fishing at the end of the day, you can just store the entire leader on the spool versus having to cut it off or do some wacky storage technique. Oh, this is on. Got them on? Yeah. Oh, watch the power pulls. Watch the power pulls. Let's go to the front of the boat. Wait, wait, Clay, wait. Get the weight, get the weight. <laughs> See? Just take that weight, unclip it, so that way she can just keep on reeling on that fish. Good job. All right. What we right got? here. Ooh, it looks like. It, looks some like, type of mackerel. it does look I'm like a mackerel. I'm not playing around this time. We're grabbing a gaff. It's a nice little one right here. Yeah. We'll stick a gaff in them. All right. You're gonna gaff them? Yeah, I'll gaff them. The well, thing is, right. he's got teeth, man. I'm not gonna play around with them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was playing around with them right there. I was just playing. You better get him before he gets unhooked. Get up. Woo Check that out, little kingfish. And you can see those teeth, they're just razor sharp. So we got lucky on that one. The thing is too, is you ever fish in a spot where you know there's a lot of toothy fish, try to set the hook as fast as possible. Cause that's gonna help to get it right in the corner of the mouth. Whee! So after catching a couple of these ballyhoos, we're just doing what's called butterflying them. And basically we're just removing the backbone from the bait. And we'll show you why we do that. But basically what you do, is you just run the fillet knife right down the backbone, right? And then we remove one flap, but as you can see, it's still attached to the head. What we're just gonna do is we're gonna flip it over now and we're gonna do the same exact thing on the other side until we completely remove that backbone. As you can see, backbone separate from the bait. And then you have these two little flaps on both sides that are filled with meat. And that's just gonna flap down on the bottom with the current. And this can actually be a really good bait. Sometimes the fish will actually prefer this over a live bait. So this is what we're dropping for today. Seems to be doing the job. I want to say that's another nice size yellowtail. That's what it feels like. Ooh. That's what it feels Ooh, like. He's really fighting. Oh, he is fighting. He's he going to win. Let's see. Who's got who? Let's so see. I got to ask you a question. Ask. Do you have any idea how you're going to do all this cooking wise? Uh, no. But I want to do a little bit of everything. You. Thank you. you. Trust me, it's glad to help. I will be benefiting later on. I have cooking. All right, let's see what it is. Moment of truth. Is Here it? we go. <gasps> nice a yellowtail. Yellow tail. Nice one. That's a good size one too. That one, yeah. It's a good one. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Whoo! Nice. Nice, healthy looking. Here we go. Yellow tail. Oh, and Clay's on. <laughs> Just like that. And this guy pooped Ooh. Ooh, rocked up. He's wrapped around something. Hold it tight, hold it tight. Don't let it go, don't let it go. I want to say it's a bigger yellowtail, but it's got some power behind it. You can see, I mean, it's definitely putting a bend in the rod. It's kind of just sitting there. I don't know, this might not actually be a yellowtail, something a little bigger. Get it. It's still there. Like I said, it's definitely wrapped around something. Came out. Ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh. Don't put too much pressure. I'm trying not to. If you really want to get into fishing and you're a beginner, come out here to the edge of the reef. Just do what we're doing. Put out some chum. Try all different types of things. You know, if you can't catch live bait, bring out a plethora of dead baits and just see what works best. 
because it's just crazy. Sometimes the fish just have a preference. Let's see, he's getting close. What is it? Wow, I that's think that's a, a really big good... yellowtail. <gasps> Holy, Holy moly! moly. Look at that. Bring him over, hold on. <laughs> Look at the size of that yellowtail. It doesn't even fit in the bait net. <laughs> that's a flag right there. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh, look at the size of that thing. That's easily one of the biggest yellowtails I think I've ever caught before. Wow, wow, that's the biggest one I think I've ever seen. That thing is well <laughs> over 20 inches, right? Yeah. That's a stud. That is unbelievable. Good job, babe. 23 inches. Are you sure it's a barracuda? Yeah, it's a big barracuda. Whew. You're just jumping out of the water. This thing's acrobatic, man. Barracuda definitely is not my favorite fish to eat. Ooh. Well. You okay? Yep, that's fine. Definitely not my favorite fish to eat. may have lost the eat, weight. But they're so much fun to catch. I used to not really care about them, to be honest, but they're such a cool fish to catch. Got some size to them. I'm not gonna hold that fish. So a little if you torpedo. wanna grab them, you, I'll give, give me the rod. Look at that. Look at that. Look how you hooked him. You did a good. I'm nice surprised I haven't broken them off yet. I don't know. I looked at, I took a second guess at those teeth. I don't know. I just, he just hasn't broken the line. You just don't wanna get wet. Is what it Careful. Is. Oh, he broke it. There he goes. He broke it himself. Self release. You ready? I'm ready, you see the way? Here wave? it is. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. This may be a mutton. Keep the rod tip. Got there it. There you go. All right. What we got? It's fighting got? all the way to the top. It is. Might be another big yellow tail. It does look like a big yellow tail. Let me see. Oh. Watch the engine. There he is. Wow. Wow, look at that. That's not a bad one at all. Not at all. Just, just, wow, look at that. <laughs> That's a good one. That's easily, I'd say, over 20 inches. Can we put them in the box and go home? Yes, I, I think Are you we satisfied? Could, I think I'm finally satisfied. All right, well, cool. I just had to catch more fish than him. <laughs> <laughs> the truth comes out. I'm just kidding, I'm joking. That's a good looking box. Ooh, that's a good looking fish. How big is he, can you measure him? Yeah, you can do that. I kinda wanna know how big he is. No! You kidding me. Anthony stopped recording too. <laughs> so I did it. Clay! Oh, you did it? I did, but I yeah. put it back on and she said let's record it. Oh. oh my god. Clay, you're what? a butter finger. You're the one that asked uh, me I to make it. So, what would you say? Listen, that is the most successful day we've had in a really long time. So, I would say your prediction as far as the fishing after a hurricane is I think better. I'm right. What? I think I'm right. I think you're absolutely right. Wait, say it one more time. I think you. Hey, listen. It's not many times where this man is right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm right. just kidding. You're I'm lucky just kidding. you have me. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. He's always right. All right, so here we are. Yellowtail is by far one of the most popular fish down here in the Florida Keys. And the reason why is because you guys saw it here today. I mean, it's such a sustainable fishery. They taste amazing. And, you know, they can actually be very difficult to catch. But today, I mean, it was just on. You know, the biggest thing about having a successful day of fishing is just trial and error but sometimes people just do these fish in swipes but this is a big yellowtail so 
we have to fillet him like a big fish. We're gonna cut out that rib cage, just like that. And from here, we're gonna get between the skin and the meat. To be honest, I need to sharpen this knife, but still getting the job done. Beautiful. So today I am making my favorite recipe I think that I could have every day with fish. So it actually was inspired by a local restaurant here in the Keys. It's called Old Tavernier and it's Yellowtail Piccata. It's very satisfying and light and it's just delicious and it's pretty simple to make here at home. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to season it with salt, pepper, flour it, cook it on the stove top. Then I'm going to make the sauce, which is pretty simple. You're going to use white wine, some uh, lemon and butter and capers, mix it all together. And you got yourself a delicious recipe that takes you all about like 10 minutes. So I'm just going to season it with salt and pepper. You can either add it to the fish directly or you can add it to the flour, but I always pour more flour than I need, so I usually just like to add it to the fish itself. So now I'm just gonna cook the fish, and it usually cooks like two minutes each side. Put it onto a plate, push it aside, and then you'll start your sauce. And I'm gonna start with white wine. So after the white wine, I'm gonna add my capers and I'll add the butter, add a little bit of flour, whisk it in there, and then I'll add the lemon towards the end and then top it off with some parsley, mix it all together, and then it's done. So what do you think? Outstanding. It doesn't get any better than it does right now. I know, I know it's saying. a famous saying, <laughs> but when I say that, there is so much truth behind it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also we just want to um, remind you guys if you can go ahead and look in the description below if you feel like helping out. And most importantly, thankful to have you guys watching. But until yeah. next week, we'll see you guys then. Thanks so much. Bye guys, thank you.